Look at me, and you're seeing the future of the Democratic Party. Long before he was sworn in as the mayor of New York City, to the best of my ability. Eric Adams was already sure that neither the septuagenarians leading the Democrats in Congress or the progressive squad leading them to the cliff are the future of his party. If the Democratic Party fails to recognize what we did here in New York, they're going to have a problem in the midterm elections and they're going to have a problem in the presidential elections. And it's intriguing, to say the least, that Mr. Adams equates what he's done so far, and that means getting himself elected mayor, with the Democrats' prospects in the presidential election. America is safe. We want to have justice and safety and end inequalities. In recent years, New York City's political class, as in other big Democrat-controlled northern cities, has become overwhelmingly left-wing. Enter Eric Adams. A Republican years ago, but now calling himself a pragmatic moderate. A description that brings images of Joe Manchin to mind, who'd need a police escort to walk through the streets of Manhattan. When you have mass amounts of people put back on the streets that have traditionally been uh, held in jail, you're seeing some of that permeate here as well. I mean, that, that's just a fact. <laughs> Eric Adams won because he ran on a credible commitment to clean up New York's crime. Like no other issue, crime defines the political belief system of contemporary Democrats. They perpetuate this idea of crime wave, crime wave, crime wave. With most of them believing that crime fighting has become racist, and by extension, the instrument of that racism is the police. We don't have to defund or disband. We need to change the ecosystem of public safety. The uptick in crime is due to the overproliferation of guns in our community. Mr. Adams faces an uphill battle. Four of New York's five boroughs have progressive prosecutors, and the new DA in Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, won't prosecute charges, including resisting arrest, and will reserve pretrial detention for what he calls serious cases. That is the central challenge to any moderate Democrat. The left, such as teachers unions, hold many levers of power and they won't budge. To his credit, Mr. Adam is only too aware, but remains unfazed. This campaign was for those who have been betrayed by their government. There's a covenant between government and the people of our city. You pay your taxes, we deliver your tax dollars through goods and services. We have to fail to provide those goods and services. January 1st, that stops. The defining fight will arrive when Mayor Adams follows through on his plans to recreate the city's plainclothes police unit, which his predecessor, Bill de Blasio, disbanded. Now you'll have the perpetrators out there in the streets saying, hey, listen, we don't have to worry about undercover officers anymore. We only have to worry about uniforms. So when we see no uniforms, there's no cops around. New York's plainclothes anti-crime unit of about 600 trained street cops was a major component of the broken window strategy initiated by Rudy Giuliani in the mid-1990s. It worked. Just as a broken window left untended is a sign that nobody cares and leads to more damage, so disorderly conditions and behavior left untended is a sign that nobody cares and leads to fear of crime, more serious crime, and urban decay. Progressives hated it. Much of urban politics the past 15 years and the progressive prosecutor movement flows from antipathy to broken windows policing, which they think targets young black men. Some will continue to say that we must choose between public safety and human rights, but we can't have both. Mr. Adams once likened his politics to Joe Biden's pragmatism. But while Mr. Biden may have shifted leftward, two prominent Democrats, Joe Manchin and Eric Adams, appear to believe the Democratic Party's future now lies elsewhere. Manchin-Adams in 2024, anyone?